Voyager 2 has been around for a while. It's an explorer with no pilot, heading off into the vastness of space, collecting data about our universe. The space probe was launched on August 20, 1977 from Cape Canaveral in Florida, and to this day, it's still transmitting data back to Earth. Voyager 2 was specifically designed to study the edge of our solar system. It passed through Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, analyzing the planets up close. Today, Voyager 2 is still cruising through space. As time goes by, it flies ever farther away from Earth. It's currently about 11 billion miles away from our home planet in the depths of interstellar space. Because of that distance, maintaining contact with Voyager 2 is a huge effort. Even if radio waves travel at the speed of light, it would take ages for a signal from Voyager 2 to reach Earth and vice versa. That makes it a lot harder to send and receive signals to and from the space probe. But now, Voyager 2 is back online. How did that happen? Network Updates In 2020, NASA has successfully contacted Voyager 2 after completing upgrades to one of the antennas in the Deep Space Network. The DSN consists of giant antennas spread around the world. The network has antennas in Madrid, Spain, Goldstone, California, and Canberra, Australia. The antennas are positioned this way so that any spacecraft within line of sight can transmit and receive signals at any time. Despite this wide reach of the DSN, Voyager 2 is a challenge to keep in touch with. During one flyby in 1989 with Triton, one of Neptune's moons, the space probe was deflected southward. It's been heading in that direction until now, so it no longer has line of sight with the Goldstone and Madrid antennas. The Canberra antenna, called Deep Space Station 43 or DSS-43, is the only one that can communicate with Voyager 2. DSS-43 was the antenna that went through major repairs and upgrades. That way, it could send out commands to Voyager 2 more effectively. Also, the transmitters of DSS-43 have not been replaced in 47 years, so they're really long overdue for upgrades. While the antenna was under repair, Voyager 2 was still transmitting scientific data back to Earth. NASA was able to receive them, but without DSS-43, they couldn't send instructions to Voyager 2. But now, with an upgraded DSS-43, Earth can again keep in contact with Voyager 2. But because of the vast distance between the space probe and Earth, it takes 17 hours for messages to get relayed. So, if Earth beams up instructions to Voyager 2, the signal would take 17 hours to get to the space probe. Then it would take another 17 hours for Voyager 2 to broadcast a reply back to Earth. That's a 34-hour round trip for radio signals, which is about a day and a half. Beyond the Sun Where is Voyager 2 now? The 44-year-old space probe is currently in a region called interstellar space. Roughly, that means it's between the Sun and other stars in our galaxy. More specifically, the space probe has flown beyond the heliosphere, which is a bubble of plasma created by solar winds. The heliosphere protects the solar system from radiation and other stars. In interstellar space, there are lots of cosmic rays scattered by exploding stars, which produce tremendous amounts of radiation. The heliosphere blocks those rays from entering our solar system. Where is the heliosphere exactly? Actually, the heliosphere extends a bit beyond the solar system. So, in essence, Voyager 2 has already exited our solar system. It's venturing out into the unknown. What's in interstellar space? It may look empty, but it's far from nothing. Most of interstellar space is made out of hydrogen and helium, two of the most abundant elements in the universe. Along with them are clouds of gas and dust composed of different elements. The particles are spread out thinly, though. Interstellar space is a lot less dense than Earth's atmosphere. The estimated density is one atom per cubic centimeter. That's not much, which is why interstellar space appears empty. Record-setting voyage Voyager 2 is an old piece of equipment, but it has made history more than a few times. Here are some of its grand achievements. 
First up, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to explore Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune up close. Thanks to its observations, scientists were able to learn the more intricate details of each planet. Also, in 1986, Voyager 2 was the first man-made object to fly past Uranus. Nothing else at the time went further than that. Along the way, the space probe also discovered 10 new moons and two new rings around the planet. Not only that, but in 1989, Voyager 2 was also the first man-made object to fly by Neptune. While it was there, it discovered five moons, four rings, and the famous Great Dark Spot of Neptune. Power Hungry Voyager 2 draws power from something called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or RTG. It's a bit like a nuclear power plant, but much smaller. An RTG uses heat from radioactive decay to generate electricity, like how a nuclear reactor uses heat from nuclear fission to produce power. The RTG powers 11 scientific instruments plus the radio transceiver. The radioactive material in the RTG decays over time, so it won't provide power forever. Each year, Voyager 2's power output decreases by 4 watts, and over the years, NASA's engineers have had to turn off instruments one by one to save energy. Currently, only 5 of the 11 scientific instruments on board are active. Most of them are instruments that measure energy. The cameras have been turned off. Though it would have been nice to see what interstellar space looks like, NASA engineers also have to weigh out options. In interstellar space, there's nearly nothing to see in close range, so it's best that the cameras stay offline. That way, Voyager 2 can squeeze more power out of its RTG for instruments which are more useful in that region of space. According to Ed Stone, the chief scientist of the Voyager program, at its current state, Voyager 2 would only have enough power to last until 2024. That means it has three years left to stay online and continue transmitting data. Even then, it's astounding how Voyager 2 managed to survive for so long. It's been operating for more than 47 years, which is about two-thirds as long as NASA has existed. When it finally runs out of power, Voyager 2 will continue to drift across interstellar space, but we'll no longer know what will happen to it. A token from humanity. Voyager 2 does not only hold scientific instruments in its journey of exploration, it also holds what's known as the Golden Record. This is a selection of various images, sounds, and greetings in different languages recorded on a 12-inch copper LP. Astronomer Carl Sagan led the committee who chose the content in the Golden Record. The idea is that since Voyager 2 would probably orbit somewhere around the Milky Way, it would be nice to have a sort of time capsule from the space probe's creators in case some form of intelligent life finds out about it. In case any aliens come across Voyager 2, they'll find the golden record on the surface of the space probe. An aluminum case holds the record, and etched onto the case are instructions on how to decode the message. The instructions come in the form of symbols, which the Voyager team hope that aliens can decipher. If aliens manage to crack the code, they'll catch a glimpse of what humanity is all about. Our culture, ways of life, even our mathematics and physics. Why an LP record? Well, in 1977, more advanced data storage systems weren't invented yet. They didn't have hard drives or flash memory yet at the time. Thus, Carl Sagan and his team chose an LP as a storage medium. There's even a needle and a cartridge on board Voyager 2 to play the record. The question is, do aliens know how to play a record? What if their technology is leaps and bounds beyond ours? We haven't encountered extraterrestrials yet, except in movies. So the hope is, if they're around, they would be able to decode the message. Let's hope they're friendly and don't decide to colonize our planet, though. 11 billion miles from Earth. That's far. Literally out of this world far. Voyager 2's mission to study the solar system's outer planets may be complete, but its voyage is not over yet. As you watch this video, it continues to drift through interstellar space at nearly 39,000 miles an hour. It'll keep going, venturing into the unknown even after it runs out of juice.